ಇದರ ರಿಟ ಹಲೋ ಚಕ್ರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಣ್ಣ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಣ್ಣ ನಾವು ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪವರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಕಾಲನಿ ಸೊ ಹೆವಿ ರೈನ್ ಇನ್ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಓಪನ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಟ್ರಿ ನಾಟ್ ಶೂರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಶೂರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ವಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ರನ್ ಲೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾಟ್ ಸೋ well but anyway we we continue as long as it allows me to teach yes so how is everything well francis also came but uh, we are not able to see him his voice yes sir So how is everything your college started? Brother Francis, how are you doing? ಹಲೋ ಚಕ್ರಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಮೀ ಎಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಯು ನೋ ಸೊ ಮೈ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಸೋ ಗುಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಶೂರ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು
Okay. Good evening, friends. Everybody is fine? Doing well? Good evening, brother. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I am doing very well. Okay, sorry. I suddenly, we... got, suddenly got very busy, so I am a little late, late, but I will do it. No I problem. Will... We we don't have a power here in my apartment. Maybe this entire company you know. we lost power. So I am somehow with the light uh, under the with the lamp. We don't have a power here in our apartment. The internet is going and coming. I am just using my mobile internet. It is not really. Uh, supporting in between i'm not sure if we don't get the power we may have to stop so let's pray and continue the class my laptop also running with the battery i'm not sure how much time it will help us so uh, who will pray today i see a new friend uh, santa raju brother are you here can you start with the word of prayer Okay, Brother Santa Raju. Okay, I think he is not able to hear. Ketan, you have already opened your audio. Can you pray? Yes, yes, I can. I will. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanking you for this awesome time you have given. Again, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Come near you. Lord Jesus Christ, more in depth. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, what can be more great than this? Thanking you, oh Lord Jesus. Today, whole day you have been just and you have put there. From n number of evil plans, n number of evil attacks, which we are unknown of. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, all this happened just because of your, your mercy, your grace, and your love upon us. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, I especially pray that you help us, Othanna, sir, will teach us, oh Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, like, we should learn it and we should imbibe it in spiritual manner in order to increase our spiritual life, enhance our spiritual life, improve our spiritual life. Be with each and every participant over here. And Yes, bear with me one minute. There's now power came. I am organizing. This internet has me. Okay. Okay. This is what not required. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. God is so good. I thought we may not be able to do today's class, but at the last 11th hour, God sent the power and now everything is set right. We can continue our class. Yesterday, we stopped in between and we continue with God. any... 
yeah we we continue if some friends come they'll join in between dr sharon is coming okay so we are continuing the doctrine of the church part two ecclesiology what is the world does the church do what in the world the church do a study of the doctrine of the church that's what we're seeing hope you remember the word church organized with the greek term originated with greek term ecclesia which means an assembly of those whom god has called forth to be his people and to do his will and we continued somewhere we stopped yesterday here worship we discussed about proskuneo which means to bow down laterio means has a basic meaning of priestly service of sacrifice and also spobia means to reverence or fear god we have seen the in-depth meaning of worship yesterday we continue and the other function of the church is instruction instruction for maturity second timothy 3 16 to 17 we read chakri do you have a bible with you can you read the second timothy 3 16 to 17 oh, no, one minute or no? yeah so remedy to false doctrine why instruction to know where we are and whether we are going in the so right second timothy, or not yeah please read second timothy 316 to 17. 316 these are the 12 he appointed simon to whom he gave the name peter james son of jebedai and his brother john is it right or not yeah read uh, son of uh, son of Jebedai and his brother John, to whom he gave the name uh, Boine, Boinerg, Boinerges, which means son of sons of Thunder, Andrew, Philip, uh, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of uh, Alphaeus, uh, Thaddeus, uh, Simon the uh, Zealot, and Judah, Judas Iscariot. Who betrayed him jesus uh, accused by his uh, family by uh, and by his uh, and by teachers of the law then uh, is that enough enough mm -hmm. let me see i'll check it uh, second second timothy oh, second sorry, sorry. timothy 360 is it right no, 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 no I, not from. I opened that actually, in fact, but uh, I read the, another one. On okay, you come back to Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Three sixteen. Yeah, all scripture is uh, God breathed mm -hmm. and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and uh, training in righteousness, so that the servant of God. Who uh, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture is God breathed and uh, it is for instruction. Where we learn this in the community, the, the, the function of the local church is to instruct people in a way that they can get into maturity and they can continue to grow in God's maturity. Um, so spiritual nourishment, 1 Timothy 4, 6 also where we read, the local church is for instructing God's word. And uh, within that instruction, we teach the doctrine, spiritual nourishment. And within that spiritual nourishment, helping people to acquire godliness in their private life and in public life and helping people to submit one another. Because when a community come together, 
being in a community, learning from one another, and uh, they learn how to submit to one another. That's what we see. We have seen yesterday the models of the church, um, the elder ruling, and uh, the congregation submitting to one another and growing as a community and a proper focus on life. You know, the church helps us to have the prop, proper focus on life in order to reproduce himself. The himself is used in the context of the church. So, so the, in, as we instruct people in the church, the little church will reproduce, replicant. You no, know, one church will produce another church and the two churches will produce some more churches. It's a kind of kingdom of God will continue to grow and multiply. So the functions of the church as we continue to see worship and instruction and number three, fellowship, koinonia. You know, the Greek word koinonia is used for uh, the, the English word fellowship is derived from the Greek word koinonia, mean sharing participate. Now, in the fellowship, we share one another. We share our resources, we share our knowledge, and we share our uh, physical help. And our sharing is the center of the church. So member, member caring, caring one another, and also participating in one another's life, involving in the life, sharing of goods, and uh, even sharing in the prayer, prayer life, coming together. You know, it's a life sharing. So this is a, the in-depth meaning of uh, koinonia. koinonia, right? So today, if the church maintains that koinonia, then a lot of problems will be solved. A lot of problems will be solved if the koinonia is the center of the fellowship. So the ministry, worship, instruction, fellowship, and ministry. So evangelism and uh, mutual service, service to one another. So ministry, the word ministry is an umbrella word. Not only sharing the gospel and helping people to know and evangelism, but much more, you know, the mutual service. Sharing the gospel with the uh, people who do not know the Lord, and also ministering to the people within the community in, in, in fellowship, participating into their life and sharing goods and uh, sh celebrating the life within the community. And also church is also an organization. Uh, administration, yesterday we have seen different types of administrations and orderliness and other functions. Baptism, the ordinances and orderliness, as we have seen, church should be in order, proper order. And the ordinances, the Catholic Church has uh, more ordinances, but the, the evangelicals, the reformed churches, we have only uh, two ordinances, particularly baptism and the Lord's Supper. These are the two ordinances practiced in the church. These are the functions of the church and uh, much more we need to discuss today. We get into... Uh, the house church concept where we discuss more. So the leaders of the local church, leaders, pastors, and deacons. You know? Some churches don't have pastors, uh, particularly some brethren churches, they don't um, have a structured pastors, elders ruling, and uh, they share on rota basis uh, their responsibilities. Uh, and then uh, there are some strict brethren, they have their own ways functioning. So some churches have functioned on the elders, but mostly by and large, church functions with the pastor's administration and pastor's involvement and some with the deacons. Terms used in this leadership, presbyter, presbyter rose 69 times in the New Testament means mature, dignity of office. So the elders have the dignity and overseers, presbyters, overseers, episcopos, six times in the New Testament, watch over, functions of the office, no? The overseer, the responsibilities to watch over 
the nature and the function of the entire congregation of the assembly so uh, within that we have another term deacons diakonos means minister a uh, servant minister a servant these are the particular terms used in the leadership context of the church so the qualifications to be uh, a presbyter or a overseer a deacon so bible clearly says 15 qualities first timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 7 so can somebody read let's spend a little time on these uh, qualifications first timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 9 Is there anybody who is opening the Bible? By the time open, let me explain. These 15 qualities comprises with this character, family life, relationships, ministry capable, capability, and maturity. Under these subheadings, these 15 qualities are mentioned in the Bible. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Can you read? Is a trustworthy statement. Mm -hmm. If any man aspire to be the office of overseer, it's fine work he desires to do. An overseer then must be above reproach, husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine or punctuousness, but gentle uncontentious, free from the love of money. Mm -hmm. He must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under the control with the dignity. But if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will we take care of the church, church of God? But not a new convert, lest we become conceited, fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. Mm. But he must have a good reputation and those outside the church with the, those outside the church so that he may not fall into reproach mm. on the snare of the devil. Yes. So amazing. We, if we meditate on these 15 qualities, if the church can elect or select or appoint, the churches usually they do with these three. Some are appointed as a pastor, sir, and some elect, or some select. Either select, or elect, or appoint. Whatever the mode of um, method to bring people into the leadership, if they can really follow all these fifteen qualities, and we will really shine in the darkness. The church will shine in the darkness. And yesterday we have seen like century petal mission model will attract millions of people particularly in this country india people we don't need to share people will get attracted to the glory of god as we i have explained yesterday century petal model when it starts shining the glory of god people around will observe that great glory of god and they will wonder and they come to worship the glory of God in that community. They will love to come to that community. Uh, but today, sadly to see that uh, any church or a mission agency or organization, if they wanted to either elect, select or appoint, uh, sadly to see that they, these are the, not the criteria. So what is the criteria? Some in some contexts, not much in generalizing, but mostly influence, either with their family background or with their, uh, even the cast, cast, cast plays a vital role in Indian administration. Whether you believe it or not, still the cast plays a vital role in uh, either selecting, appointing, or um, uh, bringing people into the leadership. So character, family, relationships, ministry capability. And I have seen most of the times people don't see this, either he's a capable or not. 
since he's a bishop's son, let's appoint as a faculty and a training in some big institute so that the bishop will send more people to my Bible college. If he's a general secretary's son, or maybe daughter-in-law, or maybe son-in-law, or some relative, let's give him some appointment in the ministry so that the organization will go. Yes, there are, there are, there, those are good logical um, reasons. But today, very sad, sad to see the Indian church filled with the politics. So the qualifications, and today, somehow, people are not in line with that, as we need to continue to teach, educate, empower. Character, family, relationships, ministry capable, and maturity. Whether the, these, these are really biblical qualities God has really instructed, uh, but uh, leaders of the local church, uh, we, we may not be able to blame them, we don't blame them, but circumstances pressurizes in that way to manage their own huge structured uh, organizations in the church. So we are going to see the, the whole church. When the church allows so much structure, you know, somehow to manage that structure, people fall into the trap if they may not be able to follow the qualities given by God. Now, duties. The duties of the elder involve shepherding the flock, teaching, ruling our gender leadership, and guarding against error material, and uh, material obligations. So the, what, are, what are the duties of these elders? The duties of the elders are to see the spiritual maturity of the flock, teaching, and um, uh, and uh, guarding against the error. But today, if the clergy try to teach, uh, the lay people are not in a really position to listen. And now, sometimes it is the lay people, they try to overpower the clergy. There is a lot of clash between the clergy and the lay community. So there is a kind of clash. So because sometimes lay people are more educated than the clergy lay people are more aware of the contemporary issues than the clergy. Sometimes more lay people are more spiritual than the clergy. So there are some issues that need to be discussed. So the clergy should be in the higher position in every aspect, in spirituality, in teaching, in acquiring wisdom and uh, acquiring the contemporary issues. Then what happens? They will be able to give the best to the lay community so that they will learn and they will train. But what, happen, what happens today across the country, the Bible schools are there just existed as a monument to teach all a kind of um, uh, Western theology, which is not really relevant to the culture and the context of the people. And these people on the market, and today the church is filled with people who work in the market. They face real struggles, real issues, and uh, their interaction with the Hindu friends, you know, they are in the business of relating with the people of different cultures, contexts, and their religions. But whereas the clergy is in a, like a nutshell, not able to relate with the community out there, 24 by 7, the pastor's meeting, pastor's conference, you know, within the kind of Christian box, they are not able to open up their eyes and see what is happening outside. What happens ultimately, the, the clergy becomes irrelevant. So there will be a kind of clash. Duties. What are the duties? The clergy should involve in shepherding the flock. So the, now the number, the popularity of elders is mentioned frequently. Um, uh, though one is leader or spokesman. So these are the leaders, the, the, the leaders of the local church, elders, pastors, and deacons. So the higher realm of the leaders need to possess that higher qualities as God instructed. If these people can have this kind of godly character, uh, a Christ-centered family, and uh, a loving environment, a kind of relationship, capable to, capability of ministry, ministry, capabil ministry capability, what it teaches? It teaches to upgrading ourselves. 
I'm so much delighted and uh, I really appreciate all of, most of you are a capable um, a clergy and you have a higher um, qualification, but still you want to upgrade yourselves. You know, that's the nature God expects from all of us. And that gives us maturity. What happens when the clergy, uh, the, the pastors and the leaders, when they get into some kind of level, they stop learning all the time giving. No, I should continue to learn, upgrade myself. And today, um, the systems are not really working. Since from two days, I'm really struggling. I have a BSNL um, router. It is helping my children to attend online classes. That internet is not sufficient for me. So I bought another uh, uh, at internet. That fellow came and in installed. But the router is not really supporting. Right now, I am having a lot of tension. Power came. But the rotor is not supporting my internet is not that it's not displaying. Maybe the, I already wasted a thousand rupees. Another router I bought. This is also not working because the latest technology is not supporting one another. There is a lot of upgradation need, needed. My laptop and the router are not matching. Maybe I need upgraded router. I thought I don't know. I can't spend much money. I bought only thousand rupees uh, lesser price. It is not matching. In the similar manner, in our ministry also, every time we need to update ourselves, we continue to upgrade our wisdom, upgrade our uh, methods, strategy, approach. The church strategy needs to be relevant. Now, the other uh, things that we need to discuss in this church doctrine, baptism, ordinances. Yesterday I have said we have two ordinances. One is water baptism. And the other one is Lord's Supper. Water baptism, obligated practice. It is an obligated practice. Yes, we all have to obey the Lord's commandment and we should take baptism. I don't undermine, underestimate it because Matthew's Gospel 28, 19 clearly says that we need to uh, baptize people and we should encourage people, which means identification with the community, even Romans Chapter 6, 4 to 5 also says there are different views of baptism in different churches, but primarily these three views means of saving grace. Baptism is one of the means of saving grace. Of course, an individual has been saved when he accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior. But what all happened inside, uh, it is an outward expression, uh, an essential, an obligated uh, practice given by the Lord Jesus Christ. And also sign and seal of covenant and symbol of our salvation. But it's not just baptism, it's not salvation, but the symbol of salvation. The mode of baptism, immersion from baptizo, because the word baptizo, baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, mean to dip, immerse, which best visualizes Romans 6, the Catholics have held to seven sacraments like baptism, Eucharist, Lord's Supper, what we call Lord's Supper, they call Eucharist, confirmation, penance, extreme unction, holy orders, and marriage. They have seven sacraments, but uh, the evangelicals have only two, the baptism and the Lord's Supper. We are discussing only two. Now, so understanding the sacrament of baptism. How do we understand this? Baptizin, the Greek word, as I said, baptizo, synonym, to plunge or immerse, being buried with Christ, means death, and emerging as a new creation, resurrection. When you are baptized, you are dead to sin, and uh, rose again for a righteous life. Right? So, creation, the baptism uh, uh, prefigured even in the Old Testament, creation, Genesis 1, and the great flood in Genesis 79, and the Red Sea crossing, Exodus 14, we see some kind of symbolic uh, even in the Old Testament. Even in the, Paul talks about it in Romans. 
they all went under the water as a symbol of dying to sin and raising to righteousness. Baptism revealed, even in the New Testament, where we see the ministry of John the Baptist, Mark the Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 to 8, and the baptism of Jesus, Matthew chapter 3, 13 to 17, where we see Jesus' baptism shows us the value of humility. You know, it needs a lot of humility, courage uh, to get into the community. Of course, it is not the license to get into the church, but it's a voluntary initiation to express our faith that we possess in our inside to the public. So the baptism of Jesus help us to understand his humility. You know, it's a voluntary initiation from Christ. And it should be our voluntary initiation from the individual. It's not a conversion. It's not a pressure from somebody. It is the individual's voluntary initiation to confess his faith to the community out there. I still remember in 1994, January 1st, there is nobody there in that little town, Tenali. And um, I'm all alone. I was all alone in the hostel. I went to the pastor and said, uh, I want to take baptism. And uh, the, my, my parents are not there by then. They were in another faith. And uh, I was in the queue. I still remember I was in the queue. I the whole night we had a watch night service that it was night. Um, and uh, early morning, January 1st, 2000, uh, 1994. And I was in the queue. And when I went, the pastor said, so what's your name? When Rao, he said, no, how can, what is this name? No. Of course, we had some discussion before that. But he did not tell me that he will change my name but he was about to dip me in the water. He said, from today, I'm changing your name. I said, wait a minute, sir. Um, somehow, I don't know, but I want to retain my name. In my certificates and everywhere, I have my name, but I've, Christ is my Lord, and I have accepted him, but I want to retain my name. We had a lot of argument about five minutes within the water, everybody is watching, and it was an embarrassing to the pastor because there was nobody who could talk to him because everybody obeys. But here I am a kind of rebellion guy talking, uh, discussing. But finally he had to um, give me the baptism. But I took my, uh, I am baptized. Of course, my name has not been baptized. I retain my name as it is. That's a different story. Whether to change the names or not, that we will discuss the other time. But communion or the Lord's Supper, we discuss the second thing. What is communion? I think yesterday I mentioned uh, aggressively but I want to slow down and be polite in my words and terminologies. So communion, some people consider it is like a prasad. They feel that if they don't take that, they feel so guilty. My friends, we don't need to be so guilty if you don't take for a few weeks and few months for some various reasons. Today, the Corona, blocked us, everyone, arrested us in the homes. We are not able to go to the church and not able to take Lord's Supper. A lot of people are living with guilt and some people are crying. Lord, forgive us. We are not able to take um, uh, bread and wine. No, I don't think so. God has instructed in that way. So the Lord's Supper, what is Lord's Supper? We need to understand the rich theology behind this. It is just a memorial. So the Catholics, they believe um, transubstantiation. What is transubstantiation? The element, the bread and wine, literally, they become the blood of Jesus and the, and the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they take the bread and wine, they believe in the cognitive mind and believe in their uh, psyche thinking that this is literal Lord's blood and flesh. That's the reason in the first century, uh, the community around the church, they understood them as the cannibals. You know, they, were, they used to call them, Christians are the cannibals. They are, e they are eating the human flesh and drinking the human blood. Even now, the Catholic community believes, that's the reason nobody can touch the, uh, the, the leftover bread and wine when the, it's so sacred, so holy because it transmits literally 
but Bible will never say that. And, and the other community believes the Luther, the Luther, uh, Luther introduced consubstantiation. What is consubstantiation? The spiritual presence of the Lord under and with the elements. Of course, the elements don't literally change as blood, breath, breath, flesh and the blood. But the spiritual presence of the Lord Jesus will be under and with the elements. So when you take the element, bread and wine, there is a spiritual presence in it. That's why it becomes so holy. And today we have this kind of faulty understandings, thinking that when you take the bread and wine, you feel so holy. And people so get so much tremble and fear to take. Of course, the passage clearly says in the New Testament, we should not participate if you are sinful and entertaining in sin. You should check and you should confess. The Lord forgives our sin. And then you should come to the table. That is biblical. But there is nothing in the elements. It is something in you. The individual has sin. But there is nothing in the elements. Elements are not holy. Neither not holy. They are just bread and wine. That's all. There is nothing in that. They're just a bread and just wine. There is nothing, no spiritual presence in it. They don't literally become the blood of Jesus or the flesh of the Lord Jesus. We have problem. Our heart is the seat of sin. That gives an opportunity to go to God and confess and come to the table. So what the evangelicals across the church, we believe it is just a memorial. It is just a memorial. There is no spiritual presence in the elements. Neither they become literally the blood of Jesus or the flesh of the Lord Jesus. Hope you're getting my point. We are going slowly. We have uh, 20 more minutes. So what we believe is just a memorial. You just remember the, the death of our Lord Jesus. So by taking and participating in this communion, you remember the Lord Jesus. You got my point? It is not for the forgiveness of your sin. You don't take the blood, bread and wine to get away from your guilt of the sin. No, the Lord has already forgiven. He died for you on the cross. We are forgiven community. You can go to God in your, in your room alone on your knees, you can ask and God will forgive you. But some traditions of the church has given a kind of false, faulty teaching during, if you regularly take the bread and wine, you are really in the Lord and you will continue to be in the holy. There is nothing, your holiness and taking part in the communion. So in the early church, every day they took, it is just a part of their communal, commun communal community meal. As they gather as a community, they take meal. Literally, they eat stomach full. And today we take just a piece of bread and a cup of little wine. A lot of practices, some churches used uh, uh, for centuries, like uh, everybody should take the same cup. You know, particularly in India, uh, if somebody touches a one tumbler, other men may not touch us. Casteism, and also for maintaining hygiene, we need to go along with the culture and the context sometimes. We need to maintain hygiene. No, if the same, everybody drinks from the same glass, what happens if one person's mouth is contaminated with some virus, he will transmit that virus to the entire church. People don't understand this. They say, oh, the Bible says, the scripture says that we all should be taken from the same cup. You know, same cup may mean in different ways, right? So it is a memorial view. Elements are figurative only. They're just a figurative. Objects to provoke an image of Christ's real sacrifice. You know, when you partake into the table, bread and wine, you remember the Lord's death on the cross and you worship him. It is a part of worship. The focus is on memory, not on holiness. 
remember here i remember in my earlier days some churches um, they practice like this once in a month they give this they have to give particular uh, contribution you know they have to go and give uh, money and then only pastor gives i have seen it with my eyes it's an all ignorance there is nothing your offering and communication it has not no relationship at all you know unless you give offering the pastor will not give communion and a communion offertory some people introduced uh, they are not really biblical Pro what is this communion proclaiming his death you know as we participate in that we are proclaiming the death of christ but the communion and your personal holiness are different two matters you know your personal holiness you can maintain even if you don't take for some time but if when you are living in sin that obligation jesus the scripture clearly says you are living in sin maybe you are in adultery or have some problem with your wife and uh, you cannot come to the table and take because you need to set right first you need to uh, reconcile with god and take that obligation clearly god has set in the bible but today now the question the whole world is blocked and now we are arrested in the home like you know lockdown instead of saying arrested we are locked down at home and we are not able to meet publicly in a community where pastor can serve the elements to each one what do we do and some people are taking online and um, saying that yes you take everybody some people in the home they are preparing themselves and taking you no know, whatever the possible ways we have it is since it is just a memorial right you can remember the lord's death on the cross and you can participate or else you can wait when the church is open maybe you can take but one thing is sure that we should not take from the same cup long ago once upon a time we took even i also took long several years that's fine in that time the contamination was not so much and there were there are no there were not so many virus like the viruses like what we have today but today i think it is better that everybody should have their own cup market is giving small small cups everybody and some churches are opposing to that but uh, we need to take care of our health because the body is the living temple of the lord because the body we need to, we need to take care of our body we need to be hygienic and we should take care of everything right so the purpose of the church why god instituted the church the one, number one evangelism a going to others with good news practiced by all resulting in many believers and the second is fellowship so commu commitment to believers in church in unity so that why do we go to the fellowship for the fellow at the church for fellowship and as a corporate body we engage in witnessing christ to the people who never heard the gospel and teaching essential to edification and maturity we go to the church to get the teaching and worship to love god with all heart soul and mind church prayed and practice scripture reading and singing and all this a service to others and uh, 41 command commands are to be done to one another spiritual gifts have given with a purpose right so i have a less time let's get into this the uh, house church concept the mission of the church what is the mission of the church people will come from east and west and the north and the south with a great purpose what is the mission of the church unfolded mission in 28 um, matthew's gospel 28 19 to 20 share the message and live in community and serve others and worship the lord these are the four for mission of the church share the message the live in community serve others worship the lord these are the four fold mission of the church all right hope you are with me in uh, learning the house church movement i have a 10 more minutes within that we close and we get into the question and answer session so what is house church and today we 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 all are uh, locked down in the house the how church has been um uh, in the praxis level because of the lockdown everybody is at home right in the home we are worshiping 
and uh, we are worshiping online though we are having fellowship online though it is not good for a longer peer, period because we need to have a physical touch and physical uh, presence but if anyone is hungry let him eat at home lest you come together for judgment and the rest i will set in order when i come All right so eat at home if anyone is hungry eat at home in that particular context in the early church people used to come to eat at the fellowship as i already said the lord's supper they literally used to eat stomach full the bread and wine they literally used to uh, drink some wine and uh, literally eat stomach full so if you are really hungry eat at home but when you come here wait till we give so no, that was the concept uh, means encouraging a kind of house fellowship do things at home the these are the fourfold uh, highlights in the house church movement the worshiping in houses the lord supper having lord supper in the house and the role of the elders in the house because the father is the head of the house as a father you have a children a wife and some some people around you are the pastor there at home and the house can be a church role of preachers within the house so we learn all this still people are coming one or two maybe going and coming i don't know whether leaving and coming back the house church moment spontaneous worship what is the advantage of house means a spontaneous worship so you are at home it's not a structured organized a mic system whether the, the the instruments and whatever you take a plate and you use it as a you know darbu we call in telugu you just use it you know you a kind of rhythm you find you find your own rhythm and a spontaneous worship comes like a bubbles of joy from inside of your heart and then a spontaneous formal formal worship within the church their thoughts on this uh, um, the, the, the gathered assemblies of the private church appear to have been far more participatory what is participatory within the home everybody is a participatory worship you know everybody in, engages involves within the house than what we experience and almost of a necessity therefore more spontaneous and uh, informal in the house church your neighbors a few of them come maybe some others are interested sir what are you doing my wife is not well uh, can you pray for us and you ask them to sit in your worship and they sit and a kind of spontaneous uh, worship and informal it is not so structured it is informal so people are feel so comfortable particularly the hindu friends if a hindu friends if the wife is so interested in christ and the husband comes from the duty and uh, she she is not at home right wife comes after 10 minutes when the husband comes husband asks where did you go i went to the church and the husband's eyes become so big and reddish so angry but in other family the husband comes home and the wife is not there after half an hour wife comes and he asks where did you go i went to lata's house where did you go and they are having some prayer i went because i am not well maybe i thought it, it, it's a blessing to us i went to take their prayers i sat in their prayer i thought i'll come within 5 minutes but it took some more time that's why i'm late most of the times eyes may not become so red there may be some still questions but okay she went to a home a prayer christian prayer that's fine you know this is the culture around so but we developed a kind of culture we go around talk to the people somehow we want to drag them to the church you now pastors also teach bring them bring them bring them you no know, we we say come to the church sunday you know when they go to the church sunday you no know, of course there may be different things happen the pastor will preach you have to forego all that you know you need to remove this that and you should become a so called christian that brings a kind of, makes like a fuel in the fire that's a different story so here informal community grows and there are a lot of advantages i'm not denying i'm not saying that we should not meet a corporate church outside no we should continues to meet yes we should have 
the corporate churches outside where the buildings and we should go but along with that i am saying this house church has a lot of advantages right so thoughts on this practice when uh, let me skip a few slides and uh, to save the time in the new testament not everyone could speak however it is then brethren whenever you come together whenever you come together each of you has a psalm has a teaching has a tongue has a revelation has an interpretation let all things be done for edification you know in that small community in the house everybody will be in the participation a participatory uh, fellowship and everybody feel at home but it, this may not be possible in the bigger church because everything is in order one two three four they have to go everybody may not be able to participate because of the number 100 200 but here you have only six seven or ten people everybody engages in the participatory uh, community but if there is no interpret so that's a different story different i don't want to get into that spontaneous worship you know within this lock small community you see spontaneous worship as i said everybody engages in that worship mutual ministry edification one another uh, uh, serving one another uh, like kind of community meal now when they had come and gather the church together they reported all that god had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the gentiles you know most of the churches in the new testament we see the home based churches god opened doors now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread paul ready to depart the next day spoke to them and continued his message until midnight you know you see in the home it's not so structured informal fellowship sometime it can extend a time one hour two hour three hours here paul went until the midnight this is possible only in the home but not in the organized church because they have a time period and they have to finish it of one two three four finish as per the time schedule we have to finish so this is the advantage of uh, the house church so we all should practice and the mutual ministry to one another and church treasury so the, even in the house uh, now concerning the collection for the saints as i have given orders to the churches of galatia so you must do also paul uh, was a best fundraiser and he raised money for the churches other side and for even for himself also and he himself gave some to be apostles some to prophets and he says and finally even to the lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel he says in corinthians paul clearly says those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel here is a lot of faulty uh, theology spread around on the basis of few individuals you know few individuals they may not have uh, family if i don't have a wife and children you know i go around the other day i was uh, the other a few months i was in us i think three four months and uh, my money there was no bothering about money and where who will give food and what so as an as a loan i just anybody can keep me because one person can survive anywhere if i go with my entire family a bigger family three children and wife five people i don't think so anybody will invite since i am all alone there is a place to sleep everybody invites a place to eat and a place to sleep and a place to preach pulpit is ready and i i am alone i even i eat something here and there i survive but as a family it's a different story i trusted the lord i never begged money anywhere and i just somehow survived for months here going every busy busy man preaching everywhere but if you go with the family it's difficult you cannot nobody will invite you because so on the basis of one or two individuals who live like a monks uh, without anything it's it's it worked for them but that's not the scriptural base sometimes sometimes people uh, say those who are live live by faith not asking money for people and they are saints you know sometimes 
even uh, no helping people to know your need has been considered as a sin. I really struggled with these issues when I went for the first time to US in 2012 because I developed that kind of theology in my cognitive mind. Nobody should know my needs and uh, even with the verbal words also, well, some stories, you know, we always are proud of some stories. Of course, that's true. We should continue to live by faith and uh, I'm not denying it. But we should be mature believers where we can understand the text in a biblical manner. You know, so Paul, he raised funds to help others. And he clearly said, even to the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. Particularly when God distributed land to the 11 uh, tribes, the 12th tribe, Levite's tribe, God did not give anything. What he said, we need to read the text very clearly. All the 11 tribes should work hard, produce the crops, and they should acquire money and the wealth. They should give their tenth to the, this community, Levites. Levites had the privilege to receive from everybody. In that economic system, God is such a great economist. Economy can, he is a great economist, he developed that society. And today, the clergy has to be survived by the lay people. You know, the lay people, all the lay people should contribute and the clergy should be full because everybody gives and the clergy will become the rich. That's what happened in the Old Testament. The Levites, Levites were rich because everybody brings. Uh, and today, we have lost that concept of thing. Keep on, we teach, give, give, give. No, the problem with the basic theology. At one time, at one level, we see clergy should live by faith. Another, the lay people, if some clergy says, brother, I'm really struggling, my children are going to college and I need to pay the fees, pray. Another clergy will misunderstand because these people, the, the lay people will misunderstand because these people grew up in that context. Oh, what a, what a rugged pastor he is. This pastor doesn't have a faith in God. He is communicating indirectly. You know, our pastor, they said, you know, we have a faulty theology developed across our cultures. And uh, when these lay people, the members don't have a right theology of giving and they may not give. No, for example, 100 people are there in one church. If the pastor, no need to ask, if the, all the hundred people bring exactly from their uh, portion and they give, the pastor will be sufficient. He no need to ask everywhere. But today we have so many churches, where to give, how to give, that's a different story. But here is the concept, we should be balanced Christians. We should not be embarrassed and we should not be so critical when somebody um, uh, comes with an, a kind of uh, uh, needs, expressing the needs. We should not be so critical because Bible says that we should express needs even to the law. And then, let me continue. Nevertheless, 2 Corinthians 11, 8. I'm finishing within a few minutes. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my disgrace. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no chat shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. I, some other translators, I robbed other churches taking wages from them to minister to you. To minister to you, I collected money from all other churches and I brought. So, no, so Paul, he went around and collected money to minister to some people. And even he's appreciating Philippians saying that, hey, Philippian church, you have given me time and again. Others have not given me. It's not like a soaping Philippians, but he's speaking the truth. So there are so many ample of uh, Bible verses that support. And uh, I don't believe in fundraising basically. And even now also, I don't around go around and campaign for fundraising, even for my personal needs or to the ministry needs. And, but I try to manage the, 
the balanced teaching. We should not be so critical and we should understand the needs and the church should be full with God's resources so that the church will continue to uh, impact the command given to the churches. What is the command? Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. You know, see, Paul, he is raising the funds. He is saying that you already collect and keep ready. When I come, I collect from everybody and I take it. So in the rural India, particularly the villagers, they have this concept. Whenever they cook, they take some portion of rice and keep there. Some portions, if they have uh, vegetables in the garden, they take some. If their hen hatches or uh, gives uh, um, uh, eggs and keep some eggs aside and taking one hand, bringing all the resources to the church and keeping there at the altar. Still, the rural India has this practice, you know, the giving attitude. Even praise God in the churches when the indigenous resources should continue to grow, to survive and sustain. Today, uh, church by and large depend on the West. That's the reason church is struggling. We should continue to encourage the indigenous church treasure we talked about and uh, gender roles. I don't want to get into the argument whether women should worship or not. We need to have a comprehensive understanding the Bible. Thoughts on this practice, you just go and read, um, have a position as per the church because we need to obey and respect the norms and the, um, the practice of the church. What the Bible says about the gender role, let, a, let your woman keep silence in the church for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive as the law also says. Maybe you can ask me a question regarding to that. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. So uh, I'm not promoting a kind of brethren theology here. I'm just raising the verses. You can ask me questions. The so leadership roles, and I have discussed enough the gender roles I have discussed. Hear it. I'm done with my teaching. Right. So uh, we come back to our um, quest Q&A, and then we conclude today. The doctrine of the church is over. Any questions before we leave? Uh, uh, not questions. Yes. I'm asking uh, for review. Uh, we have that Rary book. Any? I mean, what other books? What do you think? I mean, Rary book is there. Mm -hmm. What do you suggest? I mean, for review, uh, yeah, book review. Another book I have given, I think, uh, Moody, uh, the, the Moody book. Moody, book you have given, huh? you have you given, I don't know, it's mentioned there. No, it, if it is not there, okay. we give it again. Uh, yeah, I will uh, check it's, it. You yeah. have given it already because after when I asked, you gave it again. Mm -hmm. You gave, huh? it, Yeah, let me yeah. know. If you don't have, I will post it in the group again. You all can download and read. Uh, well, we changed from that group to here, no? Some, ah, yeah, some are in that. Uh, you are there in this new group. Yeah. Yeah. So what I do, you, no, uh, you have the freedom to take any book that I, I think I have given about 10 books. Even now, today also, I posted some books related to house church. So any any book you can select. Uh, out of what you have given, no? Yeah, yeah. I have given huh? You have yeah. to look at your home if you like to read that, but that should be related to theology that talks about any branches of theology that we are talking, a church, salvation, and all these sub branches. Yeah. Right? This doctrine, this uh, subject, it should go much. Systematic yeah. theology related to, yeah, yeah. Systematic, related to systematic theology. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now I got a question, Anna. Yes, Nana. Uh, uh, by participating in the Lord's Supper mm -hmm. uh, without knowing and uh, without considering that the bread is the law, um, bread is the uh, 
mm-hmm. you know um, bread is the symbol of uh, the lord's body and uh, the wine is the symbol of uh, the lord's br- um, blood it leads to the punishment anna mm-hmm. it leads to the punishment no and can you explain about it uh, for a while anna how can we con- uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, what kind of rls how can we be punished okay let me read that by one. what means first corinthians chapter 11 anna uh-huh. when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supping this is the this is this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me here it very clearly says for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes then the second next paragraph says whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the lord so what it says unworthy manner means voluntarily willfully if a believer comes to the church and the spirit of god convicts him that you are not having a right relationship with him or maybe some kind of sin is uh, lingering in your heart and the holy spirit reminds you as you ponder and pray so by even the holy spirit uh, pricks you and uh, inst- instigates you to confess and for example you ha- you have quarrel with somebody he is there on the other chair nearby you and uh, the call for uh, participating in the bread and wine the holy spirit says hey guy you are not talking with that man and you quarrel with him you go and say hello to him and confess but uh, you are reluctant to do that you disobey the holy spirit and still you go and uh, lay your hand on the bread and wine if that is unworthy manner but an unbeliever comes he doesn't know what is this wine and bread maybe he was excited is a 200 members of the church he doesn't know anything so without knowing he he also takes right and uh, that is not for in that context you got my point chakri yeah i got it anna and uh, uh, for the for the unbeliever if he, if he takes uh, without knowing the uh, you know the resemblances uh, does he become the unworthy anna no no see actually what i say the unworthy is somebody who knows the context right but still after knowing even he is not uh, obeying to the holy spirit and goes and ha- lay his hand on that that's unworthy man okay even okay he never also may be there he is uh, he, he may not be really some people are ignorant in the villages they are um, so actually it is the, if you are really voluntarily willfully disobeying the holy spirit and going and having lay your hand on that that's unworthy man It's a voluntary rejection of the voice of the Lord. But generally, pardon. Yes, Brother uh, Francis will explain. Yeah, I, generally, the pastors will announce that who are the believers in the church, hmm. they should come and take. This unbel unbeliever should not be subjected to harassment or something like that. The pastors announce that who are prepared and who are to come only, they will come and take part, take in the communion. after the confession of sins and all that thing they will take even in some churches in church of south india and lutheran church before the communion consecration prayer is said they will pass they will pass what is say peace they will share with each other that time who are all sitting in the pews who are in the next they will shake hands with other people and also in the front and the back as a sign of uh, reconciliation probably my friend will be sitting somewhere i am not spoken to him many times but this will make me to shake hands with him i'll reconcile with him then i'll go to the table it is also yeah, pastor's it. pastor's responsibility to tell before the last service uh, uh, is taken place how oh, especially in catholic church they say they should not come and Uh, other than the believers of the church they should, other than the catholics they should not come and participate in the communion 
yeah got it anna and another uh, another the continuation of the uh, process i got another kind of doubt anna yes. if a person confesses his sin uh, before the lord and confesses with the uh, with the opposite person and uh, uh, he participates in the uh, lord supper and again if the if the person same person who is participa- who participated in the lord supper continues in the same sin uh, does he become again uh, the unworthy anna i mean uh, uh, he is he he is uh, the person to be punished anna you know it it is not the punishment is not the pastor or somebody does not give the punishment if you are in grave sins and then you 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 do not accept with the other people then it's god's thing that's why god is warning us not to unworthily participate it's for both of you it's for you and for the other other person also it's not only for you you are sincerely confessed to god and to him god uh, takes control over it yes thank okay. you brother francis i think brother francis explained very clearly uh, churches different churches have different uh, functions even some brother and churches they don't give to the new community and yeah. even they don't give to the non brother and uh, believers also they clearly yes, ask yes. commendation letter from other church then only you can be in that no, no. Uh, time no, every time the uh, last supper is uh, done and after to be served that time the pastor very clearly tells all the congregation whether brethren or the members of the church or who are all new very clearly wants them not to participate unworthily that's true yeah they give a lot of time and some charismatic churches give one hour two hours also to confess sins and prayer so yeah. uh, th- there is no point of somebody comes at unworthy manner but if it is a big congregation 500 300 there are some chances so that's okay but uh, one thing i want to clarify chakri our personal sin at home and uh, participating in the lord supper participating in this uh, table or lord supper um, is not an event to uh, become holy we need to understand that this is just a remembering the lord's death on the cross it is a memorial right so your a personal sin at part. home need to be dealt at home but since it is a holy communion before partaking to that we just inter- we check ourselves and we reconcile with god and people we examine ourselves so. examining ourselves so we should these are two different uh, things uh, holiness and lord table are different two things we should not mix both of them uh and will... i i have yes ketan ha huh. uh, yesterday's question like now these days how churches are going on na family individually uh, as i mentioned yesterday isn't it so our family uh, are attending workshop uh, worship on youtube church they are telecasting worship message and then sunday sermon on youtube uh now in such cases of what we should do as far as breaking of bread is concerned is some people are there in church mm-hmm. two three people are in church or say maximum four people are in church mm-hmm. but then all other families they are watching all this service on youtube so now what this family should do as far as uh, breaking of bread is concerned say all this if continues for uh, as a brother dr alexander yesterday ale- uh, mentioned that we sh- we should continue uh, praying on worshiping in our house for more 6 months so in such case what we should do as far as breaking of bread is concerned so two things we can do either if okay. you are guilty of taking online maybe preparing yourself you can stop taking when the church reopens everything is settled down after one year or two years or maybe six months we can go and take number two uh-huh. and you can prepare at home a bread and juice and you pray uh-huh. and you take this is what people are doing some people are preparing at home and pastor online uh, he is uh, praying and uh, showing yes let's all partake in it 
and all the people uh, who in front of the screen they are taking and number two uh, i know some of my community also they are not taking they, they, because they 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 rever the pastor there should be a pastor to give but some churches they believe nobody should give break the bread only the ordained reverend rev reverend should break it so there are some even do you, do you believe they give flight charges to lift person all the way from hyderabad to dubai just to break the bread there are some crazy people like that so that's fine that's their thing we are not criticizing but uh, whatever your it's church, also the, church hmm. yes it's also the local church he gives directions about the lord's supper hmm. what should be done in chennai some churches are doing and this church is doing it but he tells them keep this separately not uh, just every day what you are using juice or something like that mm. these things separately keep it separately mm. for the communion keep it mm. neatly on a table or something like that before the, the pastor says in the online service the consecration prayer mm -hmm. and the pastor at least he will take as a representative of the congregation in the church when he is doing when he does the consecration prayer he takes it that time you can also take Okay, okay, okay. Because why I am telling this is, mm -hmm. in the house churches, mm -hmm. in the olden days, in the house churches, there was a breaking of the bread. Mm -hmm. So right. that we can take that as a cue, and we can do it in these times mm -hmm. to remember his death and passion. That's true. Okay. Correct. Correct. Excuse me, I have to understand the situation. Hello. Yes, Mr. Yes. Pakar. Uh, Hello. Uh, sometimes the elders, the elders, knows uh, what you call few people. They should not take part to the table. Is it right? Mm, I I did not get the question. If somebody. Get the question. Akkal, your voice is not here, Prakash Akkal. Your voice. Voice yes. is not audible clearly. So we are we are not able to hear him. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? <clears throat> 